independence, um, I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member, Dr Rajan Prasad. Pulavanaka, namaste. Uh, tuatahi e na whanau whanui o tu moti, ka nui te mīkia koutou, a nō reira tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou, tēnā ra koutou katoa. Tēnā koutou. Uh, kia ora, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, Labour will support the Families Commission Amendment Bill to Select Committee. Uh, Labour certainly is committed uh, to families, believes that families are the foundation of our society, and family well-being is critical to the development of our children and to other members of our families and communities. However, it, it's important to note that the National Party has never been a strong supporter of the Families Commission. And it was only going to be a matter of time before they began to restructure it uh, in, in this way. Judith uh, uh, Collins certainly regularly attacked the, the, uh, the Commission in opposition, as did the Minister. And of course, this restructuring that the Minister has talked about is not starting with this bill. It has actually been going on for some time, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the, the type of appointments that have been made to the Commission, uh, the transfer, transference of funds from the Commission to other entity, entities, uh, shaping, in quotes, the work of the Commission, uh, so much so that in recent, recent, recent times, uh, Mr. Speaker, even the current Chief Commissioner has resiled from probably the, one of the best pieces of work of the Commission on paid parental leave because he took a particular political line that uh, the country couldn't afford it. Uh, and that demonstrates the way in which the Commission has, in, in a sense, been prevailed upon by this government and by this minister. The Families Commission is an autonomous Crown entity, and that means something. It has to work at arm's length from the government. Uh, and the, the, the amendments uh, to the Families Commission in this bill actually, from our perspective, begins to seriously circumscribe the, the role of the Commission. And it is beginning to look a lot more like a government department or a government ministry. And, and we make those comments with, with some thought. The Commission will have a new evaluation and monitoring role for the social sector. Now, the Minister just now has, ex has explained what her vision is as to how that might operate. Uh, but I guess if, if, if we're setting up a, a unit within an autonomous Crown entity to do monitoring, evaluation and research function in that particular kind of way, it's really difficult to see where it might end up. In the new Section 8A, 8A we get a more detailed statement on how the government sees the Commission operating. Uh, in its additional functions here, the, it appears to us that the Commission will do the Minister's bidding. Under the Crown Entities Act that applies to the Families Commission, the government currently can only direct the Commission to have regard to government policies. But when you look at the new Section 8A, it actually becomes an arm of government and, and uh, required to do uh, a, a, whole bunch of up, a, whole, a whole bunch of stuff actually for the government. And 8A uh, begins to say uh, that, that in, in, the, in the additional functions it has in evaluation, uh, and for, for, commission, for uh, to commission research in the social sector on behalf of the government. So uh, why is the government not doing its own research? This is an independent commission set up to, to work in a particular way, to manage contracts. So now the commission, this particular unit within the commission, will be managing the contracts in the social sector on behalf of the government. Um, now, this is two of the provisions of that particular uh, clause. Uh, so the Commission will now undertake research on behalf of the government and will, man and will manage contracts. Now, has, Mr. has the member from Tauranga read this bill? Does he know anything about this particular bill? Or is he still bored with his own portfolio? Mr. Bridges, listen, you might learn something. Um, yeah. So, so the Commission, through these kinds of provisions, is being, is being developed, it's being developed into, uh, into a, not as a Crown entity, but indeed as, a, as an arm of government and therefore uh, as, as, a, uh, as a department or a ministry. And we have to ask, and we will ask in the Select Committee, is this, should this remain a Commission? 
So, and and that's, that's an important question. If it's circumscribed in this way and it's been directed by the minister to this extent, then why is it a commission? Because the autonomous crown entities are supposed to go and do the work themselves on contemporary issues, do its work, and then put that evidence of that where it lies. And that is the work of an independent. Um, MSD has a multi-million dollar center for research and evaluation. And these are the activities, the activities from there that have been transferred to the, the Families Commission as actually belongs to that particular unit. So here is a multi-million dollar, tens of millions of dollars spent there, but this function is transferred to the Families Commission uh, and they, they have about $3 million to do it with. So the one, one can see the sincerity of that particular approach and uh, we have major questions. The, the, uh, the other change is the change to the advocacy function of the Commission. This is the strength of the Commission to go and examine topics do the work and bring it back. And here, in, a, in addition to all of that, the, the, this, the, the Clause 6 introduces, requires the Commission to do annual family status reports. Now, that's a large piece of work. And quite a lot of the work will be, uh, resources will be gobbled in by that particular role. And what kind of report will be produced? Peter Dunn, Honorable Peter Dunn says, He's seen the, the English example, and the English example is one he wants to emulate. Well, I have the English examples here, both the, the, the first and second reports, State of the Nation, Factual Families, and the second one, which is his recommendations, policy recommendations to the Conservative Party. And Larry Baldock would be very pleased with the approach taken in, in, in that particular report, in, in the State of, of, of the Families report. So what is being done here? Uh, we will want to know with the select committee what is the scope of that particular report and what kinds of things are required uh, and, and, and uh, that might give us a bit more of a steer as to what the minister or the commission has in mind. But again, the expertise for that kind of work lies in MSD. They produce the social report and it takes a lot of resources to produce that. This is a kind of social report on families. Now, why aren't those two things being linked and the, the largest department with the greatest number of resources doing that work? No, it's being transferred into something that there's an independent commission. So here we have a, a, the, a, the government's role, the role of government departments being transferred onto an autonomous crown entity, the Families Commission. And we have to ask why, because that really is, is saying we don't need a Families Commission. If that's what the minister is saying, would it not be honest? to actually come up with that and uh, then there is this notion the governance arrangements of the commission are also being changed there will be one families commissioner there'll be, there'll be a board there'll be one families commissioner the role of the families commissioner is not defined in fact it is left to the board currently other families i have been there mr bridges i know a lot more about it than you or all of the members put together, which is why I'm talking carefully and with some experience in the bill. That member is so bored with this. If you don't know something about something, uh, Mr. Bridges, don't go there. But indeed, indeed, this, this, this is a problem. They, is, does, can the minister not describe what the role of the commissioner, the Families Commission is? Why is, and that person will not necessarily be the chair of the board will be in the transition, but not necessarily if the, the members will describe. And then in addition to that, there is also a, 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 a review panel. Here is the minister telling a research institution how to do its work. The minister is in good grounds, good grounds to ask for, to ask for peer review. That, that then opens up for the commission. It's doing that work now. Any expert in New Zealand or internationally is used by the Families Commission for peer reviews. But here we're putting uh, this panel right in there and I think it's interference and I think it's designed to hold and control the Commission so it doesn't get lost anywhere or doesn't doesn't do the kinds of things it might do and does not criticize government policies well if that is what the government's agenda is then we will ask and we'll keep on asking why have a families commission because what this bill does mr. speaker is make it look more and more like a government department make it look more and more like a, a, a ministry and many of these functions are already in ministry today with far greater resources so significant roles are being transferred from there onto a commission which it looks like the commission accepts those but we will want to question them uh, as to how they're going to do this piece, the, the, these, the, uh, fulfill these roles uh, with the rather limited amount of resources it currently have. And why not? 
Oh, and how is it going to address the real advocacy functions that indeed are, are, are the uh, centre stone for this particular commission? So, Mr Speaker, we have serious concerns. We will ask them, but that will happen at Select Committee. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Melissa Lee. Thank you, Mr Speaker.